Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media. Welcome to this tutorial where we will be learning how to change the background color in this particular image. You can also use this method to completely remove the background or basically to do anything with the background in any image inside GIMP. So I hope that you have been able to download this image so that you can work along with me. The link is in the description. Now let's get started. So GIMP, to be frank, is not a very good software when it comes to making selections because that's exactly what we'll have to do in order to change the color of the background. We need to make an accurate selection of the background or of the subject because if we are able to make a selection of the subject, we can simply invert that selection and get the selection of the background. But the challenging part is to get an accurate selection in GIMP because if I zoom in here, this is exactly the type of image where GIMP doesn't really perform that well because you can see he's got, you know, these thin strands of hair. Plus he's wearing a t-shirt which is similar to the background. So the contrast is less. And GIMP is not very good when it comes to making selections in these low contrast images. Like these parts will be easy, his trousers and the stool, but not the other parts. Now in GIMP, the most advanced tool to make selections is in this menu, in the middle one here, where you get the free select tool by default. So if I long press this icon here, we get the foreground select tool, which is the most advanced, but I did try it on this image and it did not yield very good results. However, if this is something that you do often, that you need to change the background, the color and all these things, then knowing how this tool works is very important. So I've got a separate video for it. I'll leave a link to that somewhere on top plus I'll also put a link to this particular video in the description of this video okay so you can check that out after you watch this video but the, now the question is since we're not using any of the selection tools in GIMP because they don't do a good job what is the solution to get a good selection here well we'll have to go outside GIMP for this and the tool that I like to use is this website called pixelcut.ai which has this background remover feature and there are a lot of different AI tools and websites like this. I've used a lot of them and I found Pixel Cut to be the best one. Plus they are pretty liberal when it comes to doing it for free, even though they have a paid plan, but we can pretty much do everything for free. So I've given you the link to this particular page here. Let me just refresh this once more. Yeah, we should get this page. So I've given you the link to this particular page where all you do is you simply hit upload image and then you upload the image in question, which is the image that we are working on. So let's do that. So I'm going to select this image here. And in just some seconds, you'll find that it'll do a pretty good job and completely remove this background. That's what we want because ultimately from this PNG image with the transparent background, we're going to be taking this back to GIMP so that we can make a selection of the subject. And this is the best way to do it. I won't say inside GIMP because we are outside it, but when you're using GIMP, okay? So you can see here, we've got our final result. Now, one important thing, this tool, even though it does a good job, okay? As we're soon gonna see once we take this back to GIMP, sometimes it just changes the dimensions of the overall image a bit. And that can be a bit of a problem because we have to make sure when this goes back to GIMP that this is exactly superimposed on our original image so that we can turn it into a selection and then copy the selection. So how you can verify that is if you go over here to resize, you're gonna see the current dimensions, which is 4,000 by 6,000. So it's always a good idea to go back to your original image. This is the original image and check the properties, details, and you can see this is 4160 by 6240, okay? So I just need to, before I hit download, make sure that you've just resized this. So 4160-6240, even if you don't do this, it's not the end of the world. It's just that then you'll have to move around things in GIMP to make sure it's exactly on top of the image. Because if the canvas is the same, we won't have the same problem. And now I can simply hit download. And I've already downloaded this image. So I'll, what I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna go back to GIMP and we need to open it as a layer here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to file, go to this option that says open as layers. And I already have this image here from pixel cut, you can see, and this is a PNG image. That means there's no background there. It's gonna be transparent and it's just taking a bit of time. But once this opens up, you actually won't see any difference because 
And even though this layer has come here, because that's exactly the selection, right? And you can verify this by taking the move tool, make sure this layer is highlighted and you will see that I'll be able to move this. So definitely it's on top. So this was the point. If those, if the canvas had changed, like the resolution had changed, then you'd probably see it a bit off and you'll have to move it manually to get uh, using this, you'll have to use this alignment tool, okay? But we don't need to because now we know it's on top. Now what you need to do here is, we have done this so that we can get a selection from this because this has a transparent background, that means his boundary is the subject. So if I right click on this image and I say alpha to selection, this is gonna help us. You can see now we've got our selection. Now we, I don't need this layer so I can just hide this, go back and our selection still remains active and you can see it has done a pretty good job. You can also verify this in the selection editor window that you see on the right where you can see a mask. If you're not seeing this window, you can, though it's not essential, but I always like to just see the mask. You can go over to windows Dockable dialogs and just select selection editor and you'll be able to see the mask here. So right now white represents the selection and you can see yeah, the stool, everything has, has been selected well. The background is not selected right now. We need to select the background because in this tutorial we are working on the background. So all we need to do right now is go over to select and just hit invert. And now you can see we've selected the background. Now. You can definitely go ahead and I can hit delete and simply replace it with a new layer with the color that we want, the changed color, but we don't want to do that. The reason for that is you want this background to be there because when we change the background on the new layer, we want to take the luminance levels or basically the brightness that you're seeing, the different tones that you're seeing here on this background, we want that to blend in the new color to make it look realistic. Don't just replace it with a solid color when, and deleting this background, that's gonna look very fake as, you, uh, as you'll be seeing very soon. So with this active selection still in place, I'm gonna add a new layer. I haven't deleted the background, just add a new layer. So I'm gonna go to this new layer option here and we get this. And here it's also gonna ask us, do we wanna fill it with any sort of color? So since we are changing the color of the background, this will be important to us. So you can see my foreground color has been set to blue, okay? So you can set it to any color that you want. If you want, you can cancel it. First set the color and then open it. I had already done it. So blue is here. And that's it. I don't need to do anything else. And just hit okay. So you can see we've got a new layer with the blue color. And you can also see the marching ants of the selection here. That's because we already had an active selection when we opened this layer. Now, one thing that we wanna do right now is to get the person here, we need to create a layer mask. So how do you do that? If you go here to this option right here, next to this close icon, just hit this, and then initialize layer mask to selection. So I'm just gonna now, because we already have a selection, so it's gonna do that. So I'm just gonna hit add, and you can see it's created a layer mask, linked it to this particular blue layer, and you can just see this is same as what we were seeing in the selection editor. White reveals in a layer mask, so it's revealing the blue layer. The black part which was formed from our selection is revealing, it conceals this layer and reveals the bottom layer, so it's revealing this particular person. This is also gonna be important for a couple of reasons. First is, we'll be, we always have our selection with us. So even if we close GIMP or stop working on this project and save it as a uh, GIMP document, come back to it, we can always you know, get our selection back because we have this layer mask. Also, I'll be showing you towards the end that because we have this layer mask, if there are any issues in the selection itself, that maybe what we got from Pixel, Pixel Cut was not too accurate, we need to make some changes, this layer mask will enable us to do it. So it offers a lot of flexibility and it's very non-destructive, so it's always good to do things, you know, by creating a layer mask here. So we've been able to do that and now, we actually don't need the selection anymore. So we're gonna hit the shortcut, which is control or command. So control or command plus shift and A. And now that is gonna get rid of the marching ants. So this is what I was saying, that right now as a solid color, this looks very fake, right? So all we need to do in order to make this realistic is to take the luminance values from here by blending it in such a way that these two layers blends like that. And how you can do that is by changing the blending mode 
of this particular layer. So if I go here, right now the blending mode is set to normal, but if I change it to, if you go, you have actually a lot of options to do this. The best one in my opinion that uh, gives the best results is this LCH color. So what you're telling when I'm gonna hit this is, GIMP, keep the color from here, but take the luminance you know, from the layer below, okay? So I'm just gonna hit color and just see the difference in the image. Can you see now, now this looks way more realistic. We get our shadows back because that was from the bottom image and this just overall looks really, really pleasing to the eye. And the best part is this is very, very non-destructive because let's say if I want to change the background anytime, maybe this was my client and they were requesting a change of the background, they wanted pink, for example, then all I have to do is select the foreground color as pink, go here, edit, fill with foreground color, and then we get pink also. And remember the thing that, that I said about layer mask that you can change this selection any particular time. So if we zoom in, since we've got the layer mask, you can just hit on the layer mask, select this thumbnail. And if I was to hold Alt or Option, you'll actually be able to see and click on it. After holding Alt Option, you'll be able to see the layer mask. And I can paint black or white any time on this layer mask. If I paint, so if I take a paint brush, if I was to paint with black, okay, then it'll just basically add to the selection that we had made, that we had got from Pixel Cut. So for instance, let's say, let me just get back to the normal mode because it will work on the normal mode also. You don't have to be on the layer mask mode. So for instance, let's say if I take this black brush and just paint this, right? We're adding black basically. So it's revealing stuff from the layer below, right? From our original selection. Because a lot of times, these tools that we used may not do such a good job and you would have got a selection like this. So then because we have a layer mask, now what we can do is we can simply go here, select white, if you were seeing in the original selection something like this, and you wanted to correct it, you can just paint it with white because white is gonna reveal what? The pink color, right? So you can always correct selections like this. So anywhere on this person, on the subject, you notice something, you can always brush black or white to make the appropriate changes. So you can see how easy it was to change the color in GIMP, but to be frank, in most of the images, especially in low contrast images, as of now, I would highly suggest that you do it outside GIMP, take it back and then do stuff here. Also, if you're someone who is interested in learning GIMP from scratch when it comes to photo editing, then do check out my GIMP photo editing for beginners course, because once you master GIMP, in all probability, you'll never have to pay a monthly subscription for Photoshop again. So I hope this video helped you out. If that's the case, do give it a thumbs up. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.